and welcome to Wheels Up. I'm Sierra and I'll be your host. I am so excited to take you on an amazing journey brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and our friends at American Airlines. While we're on our adventure, see if you can spot Wings, our special airplane friend, in three different places. After our adventure, please join us as we do a very special craft in the Sunrise VX Treehouse. And last, but certainly not least, we will wrap things up with a very fun game of trivia! Are you ready? Fasten your seatbelts and let's go on an adventure! Here to kick us off is a special representative from American Airlines. Welcome passengers, I'm American Airlines Flight Attendant Sabrina Caberly. I'd like to officially welcome you aboard our very special flight today from the Sunrise Association and American Airlines to Antananarivo. It's where we'll begin our exploration of the country of Madagascar. So buckle up, sit back and relax, and enjoy your flight. Hello adventurers! Grab a pair of binoculars and get ready for an up-close look at some incredible wildlife found nowhere else in the world as we travel to marvelous Madagascar. The island country off the southeastern coast of Africa is known for its amazing animals, beautiful beaches, colorful coral reefs, fantastic flowers, wonderful weaving and woodwork, and I just can't wait to take you to see these towering trees. Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for landing as our American Airlines flight touches down in Antananarivo, Madagascar's capital and largest city. Welcome to Madagascar, or as the Malagasy people here say, Tongasua. Once upon a time, long, long ago, Madagascar was connected to Africa. It broke off the continent around 165 million years ago and, fun fact number one, Madagascar is the world's fourth largest island. Madagascar is almost as big as Texas. It's made up of one large island and several smaller islands like Nusi Bay, the country's most popular place to hit the beach. Nusi Bay is the biggest and busiest tourist spot in Madagascar. Let's check it out. Oh, the sun feels great. And I love hiking through the forest to see these incredible waterfalls. We can even take a refreshing dip in this natural pond. Ah, that was lovely. Madagascar has lots of beautiful beaches. Manafiafi is a favorite place for snorkeling, canoeing through the mangroves, which are trees or shrubs that grow in the coastal swamps, and even whale watching. From June to September, huge humpback whales travel to the east coast to breed and splash around a lot for spectators. Just how big are these huge whales? A full-grown humpback whale can be up to 60 feet long and weigh 80,000 pounds. That's about the same weight as eight African elephants. Colorful coral reefs act as barriers, protecting Madagascar's beaches from strong ocean waves. The reefs are made up of tiny sea creatures called polyps that form rocky ridges underwater. Let's dive in. Hundreds of different species live in and around the coral reefs. Keep an eye out for sea turtles. They graze on the reefs and make their nests on the beaches. Can you spot the rare blue spotted bamboo shark? And that cool looking swimmer as the coelacanth fish. I love this wild world under the sea. Madagascar is called the eighth continent, which is kind of silly because we know there are only seven continents, right? But remember, Madagascar broke off from the continent of Africa. After it did, all the plant and animal life there developed on their own and, fun fact number two, most of the plant and animal life is found nowhere else in the world. When you think of Madagascar's animals, you may think of these crazy characters, Alex, Marty, Melman, and Gloria from the Madagascar movie. In real life, lions, zebras, giraffes, and hippos don't live in Madagascar, but remember King Julian? He's a ring-tailed lemur. More than 110 kinds of lemurs live in Madagascar and get this. Fun fact number three, lemurs have four thumbs. 
That's because they have thumbs on their hands and their feet. This makes them pros at climbing and swinging on tree branches. And doing other fancy tricks? Well, maybe not those fancy tricks. Other fascinating creatures leaping, or at least living with the lemurs in Madagascar's forests, include the rare red tomato frog, the giraffe weevil, check out its long neck, the blue koa with its beautiful blue feathers and blue skin around its eyes, and the rainbow colored panther chameleon, which has skin that changes color super quickly, depending on its location and how it's feeling. That's so cool! Let's look for animals in the Singi de Bamahraha Nature Reserve in Western Madagascar. In the Malagasy language, fun fact number four, Singi means where one cannot walk barefoot. <laughs> I wouldn't want to step barefoot on those tall, sharp rocks, would you? It's hard for people to get around here, and that makes it a great place for animals to live undisturbed. Look, more lemurs and bats, spooky. You don't have to travel all the way to Madagascar to see the country's amazing animals. You can meet them in New York City at the Bronx Zoo's special Madagascar exhibit. Let's check it out. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Brahini, and today we're in the spiny forest section of the Madagascar exhibit here at the Bronx Zoo. And I'm here with Heather, who's one of our keepers in the mammal department and she's going to introduce us to all these neat lemurs that are surrounding us and looking forward to having grapes as a treat. So in this exhibit we have seven ringtail lemurs right here who I'm feeding is Sayadin. She's our dominant female of the group and right behind Jim's shoulder is Harp, our male, who is the dad to all these, these three little guys. I think the third one's a little farther behind. And then Sayadin is the mom to these two older females and this little one right here. We also have brown collared lemurs. You can see Vera right behind Jim. And her kids are hiding in the exhibit. Here goes Vera. So I have to tell you, I think the ringtail lemurs are probably the lemurs that people are most familiar with. But I actually think the collared lemurs are really cool and, and kind of subtly beautiful in their own way. There's a bunch of different lemur species in Madagascar at the Bronx Zoo. We have five lemur species currently in our building. We have the ringtails, which are in front of us, the collared lemurs, we have red ruff lemurs, we have shafak, and we have mouse lemurs. I really like the mouse lemurs, and I think people would really be surprised to know there's such a thing as mouse lemurs. Yeah, they're really small, they're nocturnal. You, it's almost like a Where's Waldo when you're at the zoo. You have to look in this dark <laughs> exhibit and try to find out where they are. Sometimes you can hear the lemurs from outside the building. Those are Especially the, the red ruffs. The lemurs. red ruffs. Oh, do they call? You almost need to get headphones to block them out. <laughs> Ringtails definitely use body language more than their voice. You right. can see based on their posture how they're moving. They communicate to the other animals what they're thinking. And you'll often see pictures of ringtail lemurs kind of sitting back on their haunches with their arms out like that, just kind of sunning. Harp, Harp does that a lot. When we first put him out on exhibit, he finds a nice sunny spot and he sits like he's getting a nice suntan. Well, this has been great, Heather. Thanks a lot for taking the time and let me come over and uh, feed some grapes to your friends over here. Oh, thank you, and I think they really enjoyed it too. Thanks so much for that special tour. Back to touring Madagascar. Some of the favorite sports here are similar to the ones kids play in the US, but they might have different names, like this one, soccer. But in Madagascar, and most countries, it's called football. A sport like American football that's popular in Madagascar is rugby. Players on two teams carry or kick an oval ball to score points. The people here also love music. Malagasy music includes drums and other instruments, like the valia. At least 21 strings, way more than in a guitar, stretch across a bamboo tube. A musician plucks the strings to make sounds. Let's listen. I could listen to that all day. The country is sometimes called the Great Red Island because its soil and rivers have a reddish tint that can even be seen from outer space. Check it out! Farmers in Madagascar grow rice in the soil. See how those rice fields are right next to the houses? 
Many families grow their own rice and eat it at every meal, with green vegetables for breakfast and with something heartier for lunch and dinner, like rumazava, a stew made with meat, onions, tomatoes, and spinach. Total yum! Have you ever eaten something from Madagascar? There's a good chance you have. Most of the world's vanilla is from Madagascar. It comes from the vanilla orchid plant that grows in tropical forests here. Vanilla is used in yummy cakes, cookies, and of course, ice cream. My favorite! As many as 1,000 kinds of orchids grow throughout Madagascar. Look at the beautiful flowers, different colors and shapes. Towering trees grow here too. There are about 192 kinds of palm trees. You could say that's a tremendous amount. Get it? Thread-like parts of Madagascar's raffia palm trees are used to create baskets, hats, mats, and other items found in the island's outdoor markets. Fun fact number five, people weave parts of the raffia leaves to make toy animals. How cool! Toys like these cars are made from recycled tin cans. How cute! Wood carving is another common craft. Can you find any wood carved statues or walking sticks at this market? Or maybe you will find the traditional lamba that's worn in clothing. The colorful fabric wraps around the waist or chest. Can I get one to go? Let's also look for clothing, baskets, and other crafts made with bark from Madagascar's most famous trees, the cool looking baobab trees. Baobabs grow in southwestern Madagascar in an area called the Spiny Thicket. Whew, that sounds creepy. Our Bronx Zoo tour included a recreation of this unusual area, which is a cross between a forest and a desert. Baobab trees kind of look like they grow upside down, with their roots reaching up towards the sky. That's wild! The trees store water in their thick trunks. This helps the trees survive and make fruit during long periods without rain. That's why the baobab tree is known as the tree of life. I love that. Its lemony tasting fruit is a sweet treat and a perfect way to end our trip. What a fantastic tour of marvelous Madagascar. There is just so much to see and do. Did our look at the island's crafts inspire you to make some crafts of your own? We're about to find out. It's time to board our American Airlines flight to head to the Sunrise Treehouse for crafting. Wow, that was such an incredible adventure. We discovered so much. Did you spot Wings the airplane? Here are the three different times where we spot Wings. Great job. Time to get back on board our flight. Our next stop is crafting in the Sunrise Treehouse. Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm so excited to be doing arts and crafts with you today. Today you learned all about Madagascar, so today we are going to make a lemur craft and a woven basket craft. I hope you have fun! Supplies needed, project one, lemur watercolor painting, construction paper, one white, one any color, watercolor paint and paintbrush, pencil, black crayon or oil pastel. Project two, woven paper basket. Construction paper, five or six different colors, scissors, glue, markers or crayons. The first craft we are going to make is a lemur craft. So I have a white piece of paper that I'm going to draw the lemur on and then I have some watercolor paint because I'm going to paint mine but you can also use markers to draw it however you want. And then I also have some crayons and pastels and I'm going to use these to outline the lemur so that when I go over it with the watercolor, it resists it. So you can use either one. I'm going to use a pastel. And first, I'm going to outline the lemur. So I'm going to start with the head. I'm going to draw an oval shape like this. And then I'm going to draw the ears and I kind of already outlined it with a pencil, so if you want to do that, you can too, and then go over it with your pastel. And then a little line inside like that, and then I'm gonna go across and then draw the other ear.
and then a little shape like this. And then I'm gonna draw the tail, so it's gonna go up like that, and then all the way around because lemurs have a really big tail. And then back down all the way to the end of the paper. And then same thing coming from the other side. And then I'm gonna draw the two eyes. And then a little dot inside of each one. And then the little nose. And then the body. And then the two arms. So it's gonna go up like this. And that's the hand and then back down, and then the other side. And my lemur is gonna be holding something to eat, so I'm just gonna put, maybe it's like a little nut that it's eating, a little piece of food like that. And now I'm going to color it. So I'm gonna use some watercolor, and you wanna make sure they're really wet. So I even dripped some water in before, but I'm just gonna put some water on my paintbrush and then choose whatever color I want. So I'm going to make the lemur's eyes. They're gonna be yellow, like that. And then I'm gonna make the face this orange color. And you can choose whatever colors you want. I'm not making it like a real lemur would look, but if you want to, you can do that, or you could just make it fun colors like I'm doing. And then next, I'm going to make the body. I'm gonna do a green color. And I'm using watercolor paper, and it's a little bit thicker than regular paper, so the watercolor doesn't go through it. But if you don't have any watercolor paper, you can just use some regular paper, and you can put another piece behind it so that it doesn't go through it. But I had some watercolor paper, so that's what I'm using. And then next, I'm going to make the arms. I'm going to do this brown color. And then the little piece of food that he's holding, I'm gonna make this reddish color. And now for the tail, I'm going to draw some stripes. So I'm gonna take my pastel again, and I'm going to go across the tail and make some rectangle shapes all across it in, all across, all the way to the top of it. And it doesn't matter where they go, it can be anywhere. And a lemur really does have stripes on its tail, so this part is more realistic, but my, I made my lemur all different colors, so it could be a little more fun. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to the watercolor, and I'm going to paint the tail a different color in each section. And if you want, you could do a pattern, or you could just do all different colors, whatever you want. So I'm just making my tail a bunch of different colors. You can make yours whatever colors you want.
Okay, so now I finished painting the lemur. To make it more fun in the background, I'm going to add some polka dots. So I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to make some polka dots all across the paper. And I'm gonna do all different colors to make it look really fun. just like this. And if you want, you can even add a frame like I did on this one earlier. I added a yellow piece of paper behind it to make it look like a piece of artwork in a frame. And this one I'm just going to leave like this. But as you can see, you can make yours any different colors that you want. This one has different colors on the tail. And you can add other stuff to the background. Maybe you can add some other animals you might see in Madagascar or some trees, whatever you want to make it really fun. So the second craft we are going to make is a woven basket craft. So I have a bunch of different colored pieces of paper and you're gonna choose one color for your basket. So I'm gonna choose yellow for the basket and then the rest of my paper I'm going to use to weave into the basket. So I'm just going to cut some strips the short way of my paper, and I already have some here, but I'm just gonna cut a few more. So I'm going to cut them, and they're going to be about this thick, like that. And I cut some before, so I think that's as many as I need. So I'm gonna set that paper aside. So first, we're going to take the color that you chose for the basket, and we're gonna cut across the paper and you're gonna go almost to the other side, but not all the way. You don't wanna cut it into a strip. You're just gonna cut it like this. And you wanna do that all the way across the paper. Just like this. And now we're going to take the other strips of paper and we're gonna weave them through. You're going to take one of the strips of paper and you're gonna start from the end and you're gonna start on top and then go under the next piece and then over and then under, over, under and keep going all the way across your paper. And if your basket is a little bit too long, you can just cut it. So mine goes to about here, so I'm just going to cut off the piece of paper that's too long, like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the next piece, but I'm gonna start from under the paper. So I'm gonna go under the yellow paper, then over, and then under, over, under, over, and then under. like that. And then the same thing with the next piece and you're gonna keep going all the way down and you wanna make sure that you start, if you started over, then you're gonna go under and then over, under, over, under, so that it looks different every time. And for the ones that start on the top, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue so that they can stay. Just like that. And I think I'm gonna do one more strip of paper on the bottom. like this. And next I'm going to add a handle to my basket so that it looks like a real basket that you can use. So I'm just going to, I'm going to glue it onto the part that's not cut so that it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to put glue like this. So if you take your paper and you kind of fold it like so that it goes under like this, you can just put glue on the same side of the paper. So if you put glue on one side, 
and then the other on the same side. You can kind of just bend your paper like this and put it on the back. Just like this. So this is my basket and this is another one I made earlier. So as you can see, you can make it in any shape you want. For this one, what I did is I did it just like this and then I cut it to make it the shape that I wanted. But you can make yours like this or more rounded like this one and you can use any type of colors you want. You can also decorate it if you want. And in Madagascar, they use other materials than paper, but I use paper because that's what I had and I made it like the baskets they have in Madagascar. I hope you had fun making this lemur craft and this basket weaving craft with me. I'll see you next time, bye. Wow, we had so much fun crafting with you today. We're coming in for a landing to our final destination, our exciting trivia game. I'm going to ask you 10 questions about today's adventure. There will be four answers but only one will be correct. Can you figure out the right answer? Let's play! Welcome to Wheels Up Trivia with Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. Question one. Madagascar is known for its amazing A, beaches, B, animals, C, coral reefs, or D, all of the above. It's known for all of these. What a magical place. Question two. The people of Madagascar are known as A, Malagasy, B, Alex, C, Melman, Or D, Gloria. Well, those other names are the names from the characters of the movie Madagascar. Question three. Madagascar is A, an island, B, a country, C, a continent, or D, both A and B. That's correct. Wow, it's so big too. Question four, what might you do at Manafiafi Beach? A, snorkel. B, canoe. C, whale watch. Or D, all of the above. Wow, so many cool things to do. Question five. What protects Madagascar's beaches from strong ocean waves? A, lifeguards. B, coral reefs. C, King Julian. Or D, none of the above. Coral reefs, a natural barrier. Question six. Most of Madagascar's wildlife is found. A, on cruise ships. B, in the United States. C, nowhere else in the world. Or D, in Canada. Correct, and isn't that Awesome. Question seven. Where would you definitely want to wear shoes? A, playing on a sandy beach. B, snorkeling in the ocean. C, walking at Singi de Bamahara. D, both A and B. Wow, C is correct. Good job. Question eight. At which zoo did we see lemurs? A, Bronx Zoo. B, 
Central Park Zoo, C. Philadelphia Zoo, or D. San Diego Zoo. What a great memory you have! Question 9. Parts of raffia leaves are used to make A. Baskets B. Hats C. Toys or D. All of the above So many uses for these leaves! Awesome! And our final question, number 10. Baobab trees store water in their A. Insulated water bottles B. Thick trunks C. Refrigerators or D. Heavy jugs. Hmm. In their trunks! Great job! Wow! You did such a great job with trivia today! Thanks so much for watching this episode of Wheels Up! I had so much fun with you today! Did you know that there are so many more Wheels Up adventures available for you to enjoy? Just head to our YouTube channel or download the Sunrise Studios app, available on your mobile devices, iOS or Android, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We can't wait to see you on our next flight with Wheels Up, brought to you by the Sunrise Association, Sunrise Studios, and American Airlines. See you next time. Bye!